Hey what's going on guys, hope all you are doing, welcome to a new video tutorial from iPinimus. Today we're gonna grab a new comparison, a brand new video and we're gonna just talk about the great topic a lot of people are wanting to talk, for me to talk about which is the Visual Studio Code, uh, it's ideas pretty much, so Visual Studio Code versus Atom. So which one is better, which one is better for like which case scenarios and when should I use this and when should I do that and which one should I go for for my daily basis development IDE. So we're just going to go ahead and cover that through this video tutorial just through this presentation. I'm just going to let you understand uh, which one you should choose, which one you shouldn't choose and pros and cons and all of the different things we need to cover on a, like a different uh, comparison video tutorial. Also uh, at the end I'm just going to take a look on the Visual Studio code and the Atom IDE and you know we eventually the the decision it will be yours but I'm just gonna try to guide you through this um, and, and just give you some help so let's just go ahead and start uh, using this presentation so if you have been like trying to choose between either Visual Studio Code or Atom uh, which one to use for your daily development career well you might be able to find that one after this uh, this quick video tutorial or this quick guide. So let's just go ahead and go through a quick introduction to what is Visual Studio Code and what is Atom. So VS Code or Visual Studio Code is a source code uh, editor developed by Microsoft for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So actually, pretty much it's a cross-platform. It includes a support for debugging, embedded get control, syntax highlighting, intelligence or into license code completion snippets and code tracking and much much more like extensions and like plugins and plenty of other different things and of course this code editor is open source ready made for you by github so all of the different issues are from wikipedia so you know like i just made them for you and the second thing we have atom atom is a free and open source text and source code editor for mac OS x linux and windows and yet again it's cross platform with the support for the plugins written in Node.js and embedded Git control developed by GitHub. So Atom is developed by GitHub, Visual Studio Code is uh, developed by Microsoft and both of them are free, free of charge and open source so you can use them on your daily basis development career. So let's get some more in depth uh, about uh, which one you should choose and see the pros and cons about each one so we start with visual studio code or vs code so Visual Studio code is a powerful id but still have some side issues might ruin the whole experience of of using visual studio code so let's first see the pros of visual studio code it has like a fast and responsive editor easy to install and use extensions like UI, through UI you can quickly or easily install and manage the extensions you have for your workspace or for like globally and you have like a customizable code interfaces workspace settings so you can just go ahead and do like work, workspace settings or user settings which get saved to all the workspaces or just specifically for that workspace this feature i really like it about visual studio code i really enjoyed using it uh, within July, intelligent license help you to quickly code and debug and navigate through your files and projects. So you can just go ahead and open up your projects through into license uh, from Visual Studio Code. Just gonna help like find the files you're importing or you're exporting where you where, where this like class is coming from, uh, where to include that, when to include this, and plenty of other different things. And also can help you. Uh, in, in a like really big deal or a huge deal debugging your code so yeah it's gonna help you a lot with the interlinesses it does have like you can just go ahead and jump from one file to another file or just import like one section of a file into a currently open uh, other file and you can just edit it very quickly save it and continue your work on the current file which is pretty pretty simple and pretty pretty interesting it has an advanced breakpoint debugging system which Atom might, might not have this kind of thing. So if you're like a debugging guy who likes running uh, running Visual Studio Code, uh, like the debugging side of it, so it has like a full debugging system. You can run the application, especially in Node.js, so it's fully supported for Node.js. You can run a Node.js application, you start the debugger, and the debugger gonna tell you if there's any bugs, if something happened. You can even set a breakpoint, and the debugger is gonna tell you which breakpoint has been triggered, which not, and when, when that point has been triggered up pretty much so you're gonna have like a plenty of things for you uh ready made for you actually for the debugging thing so if you like visual studio the normal visual studio 2017 or 2015 version you're gonna definitely like visual studio code using the debugger and the breakpoint system 
And we have also visual users would love it for the look and feel. So it has like a very, very unique look and feel. Uh, I, I personally do love that. The layout, the color scheme, the code scheme, everything. Since I have been like using Visual Studio uh, for a long time and actually I moved into Visual Studio Code you no, know, like for web development and not that much of uh, like desktop dependent development just for like uh, dynamic languages and I liked it from the first look so it has like a very nice code scheme, very colors, nice colors pretty much and a nice like layout, windows and a lot of different things. The like or the most thing I love about this is the integrated terminal. So it has like Visual Studio Code has an integrated terminal and built-in terminal. So you don't need to go get out uh, of the Visual Studio Code and use other like third-party terminal or the Windows CMD if you're in Windows or Linux terminal or Mac OS X terminal. No, it has that built-in into it. So like window, you just like uh, you can drag it, you can put it on somewhere else or like on the layout of your code editor and you can do plenty of other things with it. You can choose from like CMD, PowerShell, and Bash. I don't know why I put it there, CMS, sorry, but it should be like uh, CMD, uh, command line prompts, or PowerShell, or Bash, or you can choose from a different uh, shell. Uh, share interfaces. So yeah, you can do plenty of things for this one. Now move on into the cons and for the cons There's a lot of developers might not like using Microsoft projects So I know well, plenty of developers a lot of them actually doesn't actually love using Microsoft products at all So you say like Azure or you say something like uh, related to Microsoft and they say what Microsoft? No way I'm not gonna choose Microsoft. This is miserable. So yeah, they, they like blindly hate Microsoft products while Microsoft, they, in the few last years, they've chosen a, a brand new plan, which is going through the open source. Or, yeah, they've been like closed all the time. Now they are trying to make everything open source, especially with these new IDEs, with acquiring GitHub recently, a plenty of other different things. Microsoft is did that. So if you're that guy, make sure to just like go ahead and give a Microsoft another chance and probably you can just go ahead and try Visual Studio Code. It's not that bad. I really like it. Uh, just go ahead and check it out and you can just take a look. Some updates can crash your system. So uh, like let's say you're in June, there's a July's update. So you, you download that July's update, you updated your Visual Studio Code to the latest version and boom, the crash happened. Your, your Visual Studio version uh, if the code version is like, you know, crashed and your whole system is crashed, you can't code anymore. I know it's like, you know, uh, it's like very, very, very interesting. I, I don't like this at all, but you still can go back to the last version, which is, you know, pretty bad, but still have some fix at least. Sometimes it becomes very responsive and laggy. So if you have like, uh, you know, less RAM, like about four gigs, eight gigs. So you're not going to be able to use a lot of it. You're not going to be able to open up a lot of windows, especially when opening a lot of window and actually installing a lot of extensions on your workspace. So you're going to have like pretty, pretty bad hangups, pretty bad crashes from Visual Studio Code and responsive things stops working by itself, plenty of other things. So make sure to just to make it, uh, you know, like run with it. Try it first and you can just give it a shot. A longer launch time compared to other IDs. So if you try to launch uh, Visual Studio Code for the first time on your computer when you turn it on, so it's just gonna take a little bit longer uh, compared to other IDs, let's say, I don't know, Atom or let's say Sublime or something like this. While Sublime is not an ID, but yeah, it can take a little longer, which is not that bad, but still might be a hassle for a lot of developers out there. So that was it for the Visual Studio Code. Let's just jump into Atom's, the GitHub's editor. So yeah, as you know, it's made by GitHub. What about GitHub's open source ID Atom? So for the process of this, there's a suitable for heavy development. So if you have like a very heavy project with your whole lot of team, a lot of team members, and you wanna just like kick in, Atom is the great choice for you. Uh, yeah, I've tried it a lot, so make sure to just go ahead and check it. It has a customizable, uh, you can customize actually the entire look and scheme, like views, color, layout. It has more customizable system uh, than the Visual Studio Code. So if you're like this guy who loves customizing, loves colors, who loves themes, uh, like Atom has all of this. It has a lot of themes built in, all third party themes ready made for you. So you can just go ahead, check them out and install them very easily in your editor. You can, uh, very easy to, very easy to create and integrate your own custom packages. So you can create your 
even own custom packages let's say you have like a missing feature you want to add that you want to also automate this so you can just go ahead and do this feature uh like install uh, created by yourself it's quickly and easy and you can just go ahead and integrate it into your projects in a very very easy way Autumn package manager or apm can do a lot for you so for atom it has like an atom package manager so like uh rather than on visual studio code you have this interface which allow you to install extensions directly atom does not have this so atom you need like to run from the terminal uh like a command line interface which called apm you know if you're familiar with npm it's apm you need to download it and install it separately and after doing this you can just go ahead and install packages you can like manage or like manipulate atom the way you want to be using this package manager so it can help you do a lot of things as well as like a lot of people might find it a little bit uh like underestimating you know because someone who likes ui and likes pretty simple things apm is not uh, that simple um it has a, like a huge set of packages for any tax you require. So like a, a very, very large set of packages really move for you or by third party community, a huge community actually, uh, since it's an open source. So a lot of people are just, you know, backing up Atom and creating packages for it, uh, so on and so forth. So you can just go ahead and grab any package you imagine there's like out there. Uh, on the, the package manager, just go ahead, install it, and you're ready to go. It has also a full Git and GitHub support since it's from GitHub. So it has like an, an incredible support from GitHub. So you can just easily integrate, commit, push your code, or fetch from that. You can just collaborate with all people. You can do plenty of things with the GitHub uh, or shared teams or collaborative projects used in the atom since it has especially on github as i said because it's made by github so it has that really really perfect uh like official support so yeah this is this is what about a lot of code themes as i've talked about this so any themes you think about it's right there available for you now for the cost gets slower and laggy when installing a lot of packages so when you install a lot of packages especially in your workspace it gets super super laggy super super slowly uh i don't know why that so hopefully they will fix this box but it gets so that so you need to like you know disable some packages you're not required like uh, as as any other packages but yeah still a really huge thing to think about uh no integrated terminal which is a shame i really love integrated terminal especially from visual studio code the terminal i use it every day I use it to use uh run webpack to run my server like development server i use it to do a plenty of things without moving in and like using all the third-party uh terminal like cemender or uh, uh, Terminox or something like this. I really, really love this. Hopefully, they will add something like this. I really hope for this. So, but there's no integrated terminal. A crash and hangs a lot, cause of heavy, uh, not needed packages. So, Atom comes with a pre installed packages. They are not needed actually at all for you as like a web developer. We want to do like a lightweight project. So, if you have like a low system, you're gonna like experience a lot of hangs, a lot of crashes. Uh, because of this like uh, pre-built or pre-installed packages so you know like it pre-hangs a little bit but still pretty much fine and the documentation of Atom is spotty in places so there isn't that much of thing about the documentation you can't read through it a lot uh, it doesn't have that useful information hopefully they will add as soon as possible but yeah that was it actually for the Atom I really like it. Uh, hopefully they will add something to the documentation make it like user friendly and make it easier to read through so it's like you know spotty so yeah this is for atom let's see now the shared things or the shared features between visual studio code and atom since they are like very very similar and ease to each other so they share a lot of things there's a lot of things in common between uh, between both of these IDEs. So yeah, they have like a lot of shared features. First of things, they are both open source IDEs and you know, that's from Microsoft, the other one from GitHub. So both of them are open source. Also both are cross platform and portable. So you can just port it to whatever platform, to, like even on your USB thumb drive and you can just put it everywhere and run it from there and also cross platform. So you don't have no worries about the platform independent thing. So you can run Windows, Linux, or even Mac OS X. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And also built on top Electron. So if you're not familiar with Electron, Electron is a framework that allows you to create 
Uh, this top application is pretty much using the web technologies, the technologies that we use, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and pretty other uh, common frameworks. And version control, especially Git, so they are fully supported with version control. You can easily collaborate with like open source projects, as well as the third-party packages. So a large set of third-party packages, Atom or Visual Studio Code, they both have that community uh, who creates packages. Uh, uh, on, on each like needed on each feature they they add packages and extensions so you are always gonna find what you want from these extensions and also gonna help you the main point of the art of these IDEs help you get the job done very easily and help you throughout your development journey so yeah this is the basic thing since they are very common so we cannot like that much of uh, an interesting thing would not require to choose the best thing you can just choose something uh, you really like about your preference like Visual Studio Code or even Atom so you can just go ahead and do that since they are very very common and, and they are very similar to each other and one quick notice since this Microsoft like required GitHub so both Atom and Visual Studio Code now are in the hands of Microsoft so someone who's fearing about Microsoft here you go Microsoft is requiring GitHub which means GitHub is belongs uh, belongs actually to uh, or Atom actually belongs to GitHub so since Microsoft acquired this, you got the point actually. So yeah, no worries. What should I go for eventually? Well, if you still can't quite figure out what to choose after going through this comparison, here's my personal thoughts and opinions of what I choose, uh, or what to choose depending on your current situation. So again, this is only my opinions and my thoughts. Uh, yeah, you can just take it away. You can just discard this. Uh, I'm just like trying to help over here. So if you're a developer who cares about heavy projects, development, and love exploring a lot of third-party packages and use them through your dev process or develop process and customizing code themes, well, I would advise you to go for Atom. Just try it for a couple of days or even weeks and you can just always move on or move back to Visual Studio Code or whatever. Just give it a try and, and then you're totally safe. Or you intend for, uh, or you are intending to develop with Node.js, especially at a normal rate, with a lot of debugging and bug fixing, and also a lot of like, uh, you love pretty much something quick and lightweight running code on. You might want to try Visual Studio Code. So it's a great IDE for Microsoft open source, uh, with a lot of sets of very useful extensions and quick and easy to use right out of the box. So you can just quickly install them, quickly manipulate and manage them. And, you know, themes are available to and customizable, not as much as customizable as Atom, but they're still very customizable and you can just use them however you want. So I'm very comfortable of using both of them. I have both of them installed on my machine. So we have Atom and Visual Studio Code. I use Visual Studio Code a lot if you have like noticed on my, on my channel. So I use Visual Studio Code a lot, but I still use Atom as well. So yeah, no worries about this. I use them depending on what what I need, depending on what scenario I'm currently on or currently facing. So yeah, it depends on the current situation. And most importantly, enjoy your coding. So yeah, that was actually guys for this video tutorial. Just, just, it's not actually a tutorial, just a guide or guide you through the, uh, the, the idea you should choose for your development, for your daily basis use for your development career so which one you should use uh like the final thoughts i would advise you to go ahead and download both of them if you haven't already and choose both of them like you know download them and install them and try both of them and you can preference that after trying them for a couple of weeks you can get the point and you can actually know which one to go for so if you still can't quite figure out so thank you guys for watching again as i've said I hope you guys all enjoyed the video tutorial. If you like any other topics to talk about, just give me in the comments. I'll be very helpful to give you any hints, any help, uh, anywhere, anyway. So yeah, catch you all guys, hopefully, in the next video tutorial.